So I hope everybody is doing good. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to just come on here and talk a little bit about an interesting month that I had last month on Pond5. I really, uh, you know, it has been crazy uh, as far as stock music. We're going to talk about that today. But, uh, you know, I recommend that everybody start on Pond5. I, I did a video about this. You can see it. Uh, I'll put it up right here after this has uh, gone up. And also, it's in the description below. I put this video. It's called Start on Pond5. It was the one of the, I don't know, bigger videos that I had at first on this channel. And people still watch it and still comment on it all the time. And so uh, I, I just really believe in uh, starting with Pond5. And not just for stock music, but for any kind of licensing work that you want to do. It's good practice. It's a good site to put stuff on. It it really lets you uh, kind of get used to putting something in a library, preparing files. It also acts as a great uh, database, as far as I'm concerned, on where to put your songs and keep your keywords, keep your descriptions, find out the running time, all that kind of stuff, the tempo, it even uh, lists the tempo in there. So I think it is uh, much better today, uh, much better. And and it, and it really, with, with all the kind of things that have happened with stock music, it still continues to come out with new things, which we're going to talk about today and new ways for you to earn. And so I really am, uh, am crazy about that. Hey, thanks everybody for joining us. Luca, good to see you here. Arco, Tony, thanks for being here. Um, we, yeah, we're going to talk about all this. And we're going to talk about and see the figures from my month last month. And then we're going to talk about the new earnings that Pond5 has, which many of you may know about, but some of you may not. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. But I do think you should start on Pond5. You, there is a link below if you want to get started. Lots of links below, as a matter of fact. Um, and there's a specific link to go to Pond5. Uh, it is a, a link that uh, pays me a few pennies. So if you want to click on that and start with Pond5, the link is below. Um, I also have my free course, How to Upload to Pond5. So if you want to get started, you're just wanting to get going, with Pond5, well, this is the course for you. It's it's quick and easy. I think I did it with Zoom. I just made a, a I just showed you the process of putting your videos or your audio. I mean, you, you can put video up to Pond5, but uh, putting your music up to Pond5 and how that works, including the templates and all that kind of stuff. So that's free. You can just go and get that. That's also in the description below. And then, of course, the stock market, my book about how to get into stock music licensing, how uh, a, and a complete library and link fest of all the stock music libraries and how to get into them and direct links right to where you sign up for each one. One thing I learned this week, we just saw it in the Discord. And by the way, if you're not in our Discord, you need to be in our Discord. There is lots of stuff that we are talking about in there all the time. And you can find that link below always in these videos. But um, I heard somebody, we were talking about VFine, which is a, a stock music um, library. And I have not had a lot of luck in VFine. I've, I've had a few sales, but nothing paid and uh, and and just... It's 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 been a dead market for me. The old V fine and the new V fine. If you know, you know. But there are two kinds of uh, sites they've had, and the newest one uh, is is easier to upload into. And sometimes I will upload stuff in there because it's so fast. But uh, it has not brought me much. But the w the reason I was talking about V fine in the first place in the Discord, I said someone says, "Has everybody had any luck with V fine?" And I said, "I have not." And they said, and then somebody else came in and said, yeah, I have sales there all the time. So everybody's experience is different. Your mileage will vary with, uh, with stock music licensing. Everybody is, uh, is, is completely different in the way they make money with this thing. So, uh, and what is a good month to some is a terrible month to others. And what is a terrible month for some, some people dream about having you know, that much money. And the money I'm going to talk about today when I get into my earnings might seem either paltry to you or it might seem amazing <laughs> to you, depending on who you are and where you're coming from in this. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, but 
look down below and check out my book, The Stock Market. That that leaves that gives you all the links to all the stock market. It talks about each one of them uh, in as much detail as I wanted to go into, but I think certainly enough to explain how they all work. So you can find that below. So speaking of the stock market, the stocks have been down. Uh, this just in, ladies and gentlemen, uh, stock music has not been paying what it has paid over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, it's not exactly completely dead, but it's certainly not where it was. We, we are in a time where uh, things are happening that are not as, um, as great as we would like them to be. Um, we have to just be okay with what it is. But uh, it has been down. And I'll show you here in a little while when I get to my earnings. Um, that is, uh, it, it, it has been a bleak winter. Uh, in the bleak midwinter. It's a song I released on one of my piano records lately. It was a bleak midwinter for stock for sure. But uh, this, this changed a little bit for me in April. And I think there are some reasons. But I had a very active Pond 5 month in April. And I, uh, I have a reason. I think I know the reason for that. And one of the reasons is that I put a lot of Easter songs up last year. And this is a, a little trick for Pond 5 and for any stock music. Something I've preached for years on this channel and I really believe in, and it works for me, is that I put a lot of holiday music up. I've put a lot of seasonal music up. I put a lot of uh, patriotic music. This is the time when I'm starting to see a lot of patriotic downloads. You'll see them, I think, in these earnings um, that we're going to talk about. And you're like, show us the earnings. I'm not, and I'm like, be quiet. Um, but you're going to see that when we get there, uh, what it's, you know, some of the songs, but you're going to see mostly that, uh, no, there's a lot of, a lot of um, patriotic stuff in there. So you're going to see what I'm talking about because I, I, I really believe in this. I believe in the fact that you've got to put up what people are searching for. And uh, yes, you could, you make the bigger money probably on things people are looking for, for their YouTube channels that are boppy and upbeat and, and, and up-tempo. And, uh, and, and that's what you probably make more on. But uh, I'm telling you, the recurrent stuff and recurrent if you're not familiar with that term, it means stuff that continues to be popular or they just keep in the catalog so that they can uh, make sure that th they've got what people are looking for. And recurrent things are holidays, Easter, Christmas, of course, um, any patriotic holiday. In the United States, we have three or four every four every year. We have Fourth of July, which is the big one, but we also have Memorial Day, which is uh, coming up. Or did it already come? I can't remember. And then we have uh, Veterans Day, and then we have Flag Day, um, and all three, all four of those people like to use um, patriotic music. So you're, if you're not creating any patriotic music, then you might want to think about it. Just do it in your style. But uh, it's helped my April and mainly boosted by, as you'll see, Easter music and patriotic music. So. Uh, let me see if there's any questions. Otherwise, I will get right there. Um, Arco says, you think the stock market is also down for some reason. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, if you're talking about the regular stock market, probably. Um, Lucas says, I don't upload the same kind of music, but April has been really good on Pond5 and even on Motion Elements. I have regular income. Motion Elements. Okay. Shane is in the house. Shane, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So let's get right into it here, folks. No reason to beat around the bush. And uh, let me just share my screen with you. And we will talk a little bit about um, my month last month. So here is my sales report for April. And uh, it's under my financials. And um, if you're in Pond5, you can just go to financials. And the first page it brings up is this my, my financials thing. And they've got a very good system for checking through all the months and looking at this. And I, I just, uh, I think Pond5, I wish it did more sales all the time because it's really nice to work with and, and really well organized and pretty to look at. Nice white site with light blue colors and things like that. I really like working with it. Um, 
but as we look down here, and we'll talk about what I made here later, but let's kind of look first at what what sold. So Christ the Lord is risen today, Easter track. I'll miss you when I wake up, which is just a dramatic um, ambient piano thing that I did on an album. Uh, no, 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 I think it came out in 2017. So that's a six-year-old song that I one of the songs that I quote unquote threw in to Pond Five when I started it. And one that just continues to make me sales. I had a song yesterday that I made in 1999, make a sale on Audio Jungle, I think. It, it, folks, if you don't have your whole catalog that you're not doing anything with, your non-exclusive catalog in these um, in these, these libraries, why not? Um, why not put them in? You never know when someone's going to look for something and find one of your songs to pay you a few bucks. Better to pay a few bucks. It would take, uh, let's see what this one made. So it only made me a dollar thirty-one. Uh, I'll miss you when I wake up. But likely on Spotify, you know that would take that would take many streams, probably a hundred streams or two hundred streams to make that much. And this is one time somebody downloaded this song. I am raising my prices, but we'll talk about that a little later. All right. So as we go down, we see. America the Beautiful, which is a patriotic song. I'll get back to partner and data set earnings here in a minute. Um, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. That is a Easter song, or it was downloaded during Easter time. Chopin Mazurka, this one keeps doing good. I should really do more uh, classical pieces because they do well on all of these. Again, here's another uh, thing that people are searching for is classical music. They are always searching for classical for things and by the and just in case you don't know, classical music, the majority of all classical music is is public domain, folks. And so you can use that. Uh, Shane had a question here. Uh, did you move all your prices to five dollars or just a selection? Have you noticed an uptick in sales based on that? Yes, um, I have. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But at this time, when these all these sales came, that was they were five dollar sales. Uh, I think a few, let me look, a few Easter songs I put up to $9. Like, for instance, Christ the Lord's Risen Day, $9. And so I made $3.15. Um, you're going to see some sales at $2 and cheaper uh, because peop, they have sales sometimes. You can't control that with Pond5. All right. So um, let's continue looking here through, um, through Pond5. and. Uh, the other th other songs. Uh, thinking ahead, this is uh, my first corporate tune that I wrote when I first started doing stock music, and it continues to get sales. My country, tis of thee, which is also God Save the Queen, and uh, is is also a patriotic song. America, the beautiful patriotic song. You're a grand old flag. I think these were all the same day by the same person, and then uh, you're um, again my country, tis of the sea. I did those those. Oh, my country, tis of thee again. Your grand old flag again your grand old flag again, and then I'll miss you when I wake up. Uh, it's so funny that you see these different songs. So besides the fact that I got some big money in these, these other earnings, it was a nice month. I mean, remember, I think of Pond5 and all of these places as not just, um, not just the amount of money that I make for each sale. So $5, I make a buck 75, or if it's $9, I make th over $3 a sale or whatever. I don't just think about those sales because of that money only. It's just like regular licensing in sync licensing, where you might get an upfront from a library or sync, sync, sync money from a library that you get, but you also get the back end money from your PRO. Well, in this case, I am getting the back end money through content ID. So the more sales I have, even if they're only a buck seventy-five, go towards possible sales and possible income in uh, content ID, which I think was the third highest uh, category for me last year. No, the second. I made the second most after Motion Array of stock music in my content ID from Identify. So for me, that is a, a big deal to move as much as possible. So when I have all of these sales 
and I have lots of sales, even though they're only up, you know, making me what they end up making me total besides that stuff, 30 bucks or so, or 20 something bucks. That's still 20 bucks. Yeah. But the possibility that I could earn more in content ID in the back end in what I call the, the, uh, the PRO of stock music, which is uh, content ID, or in my case, identify, which collects content ID. Um, that's a good, that's a good thing to have. And so I'm interested in, in that happening. And I, I, I think, um, I think that's, it doesn't always pay. Arco says, does uh, content ID pay if someone bought the track? I think no. Well, if they are using the track and they go into uh, back to Pond 5 and say, hey, I use this song and I want, I, I, I want it to be royalty free. I don't want to pay for it. They will clear it for them and then you will not get paid. But not everybody does that and not everybody monetizes their channel. Uh, some people just get freaked out about a claim on their video that they want to they want to straighten it out. But I haven't found that um, that's a big deterrent. Steve and I, uh, my my podcast partner Steve Steve Bedall and I, we we have talked about this a lot, and we didn't join Identify and Content ID for a long time because of this, and we both now are making money from that, and glad we did. So uh, it's one of those things that you have to just decide on, and better to have it from the people who don't buy something than or don't uh, clear it and get that money, then, then not put it out at all. Uh, Sotos, hey, how you doing? He says, hello, everyone. For me, higher prices close to $30 work much better at Pond5. Everyone has to try prices depending on the music you create as well. Yes, and Sotos, I do this from time to time. I will put up, like, I think all my patriotic music right now is at $25 uh, during this season when everyone is downloading patriotic songs. However, I will tell you that uh, I had all those sales last month and I'm not seeing as many sales so far this month, uh, even though we're still two months out from 4th of July here. So patriotic stuff should be selling, but uh, I don't know if it's because I raised up to 25. I will say that on Audio Jungle, $25 works better than $5. I haven't found that uh, Audio Jungle, plus you make so little at Audio Jungle uh, after they take theirs out. I, I just I just keep it high. And there are some people who really um, who live and preach that you should keep everything high because that shows that your music is worth more and people pay more. Would you rather have a hundred dollars, one hundred dollar sale or all these sales that I did for, you know, buck twenty five. And so um, that's that's a thought. And, you know, uh, it, it might be it might be better to sell them at 30, have two thirty dollar sales and make uh, what would you make from that? Fourteen dollars. And. And that's twenty eight dollars for both sales. You get paid with Pond Five at twenty five dollars. So, yeah, it, that might be a good a good uh, way to go as well. But for me, uh, I've found to stimulate sales, five dollars works. And again, I'm thinking about back end content ID and possible income. So the more sales, the better. It's a it's a uh, it's a stock market, man. We're all just playing this game and uh, hoping that it works out right. So, anyway. All right, back to my active month here on Pond5. So really pretty active month. I mean, that's a lot of sales, even though they're only making a buck or two a, a sale. Um, so let's get into now this partner earnings thing. And let's let's look at these two new um, things that came up, partner earnings and data set earnings. Now, uh, I know people have talked about these things already. Jesse's talked a lot about the data set stuff, then the AI, and we'll talk about that. But um, I just want to go into as much detail as I can for you if you're watching this video and trying to figure out, hey, what is what is this income coming in called partner earnings? Now, as you'll see on my thing here, I didn't make a lot on partner earnings. I only made 88 cents. But let's take a look at what partner earnings are and what they mean. And um, so basically partner earnings, it says partner earnings apply to programs Pond5 develops to expand the reach of your content to emerging technologies and new use cases. Partnership fees are earned based on a partner receiving access to custom content set for defined loan, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of stuff you can read here on the Pond5 website. Um, partnership license are often streaming or digital use only licenses for content that appears only briefly on a social media platform, for example. These are not royalty-free in nature and include 
usage restrictions. So um, this this could be a whole new way that you make uh, income from just a new thing that they are doing. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty amazing that Pond5, and, and again, they were bought by Shutterstock recently. So it could be that Pond5 is, is just trying to see what they can do to make some more money. Everybody's trying to make more money with their digital assets and we are their digital assets. Our songs are their digital assets. Now, I didn't make much in this one. We'll see how that continues to grow, but uh, that you can read more about the partner earnings on their site and see uh, you know, what they're doing. I just realized that you cannot see the partner earnings page. Let me just let you see that so you know where that is. So when I clicked on this blue um, partner earnings thing, it, um, let me see if I can show you that screen. They have, they're, like I said, the, um, they are very careful with their, um, with their site. It's very good. And they, they explain everything. That's why I, uh, I'm again, I, I don't work for Pond5. This isn't a sponsored video, but um, this is, you know, I, I'm recommending all to everyone that they start with Pond5 and there's a lot of reasons, but uh, not because it's going to make you a millionaire necessarily. Although I've known people who have made very, very good money on Pond5, probably more back a, a few years ago than now. But uh, I do think it's good for starting composers and producers who are wanting to put their music out on someplace that they can get some experience with licensing. So I think Pond5 is the best place for that. So you can go here and read more about partner earnings. Um, it's it's going to be um, something that we're all trying to figure out and they're trying to figure out. And I think sometimes we have to be careful that we don't uh, get too like freaked out about, you know, everybody seems to get mad at people who are only trying to help you. And so for me, that's something that we we need to get over ourselves a little bit. You, you have companies, yeah, sure, they're trying to help themselves too. But uh, hey, uh, we couldn't have done anything like this 20 years ago. Nothing, not anything like this. And so the fact that we're still able to earn money with a company and they're presenting us with different ways uh, to to do things is, is really important. Um, anemi, an anime, anime, anime. <laughs> Glad to have you here. Just made a pond five account about a month ago. Haven't had any sales yet, but I'm hoping things get better. I'm trying to upload three to four tracks per week on average. Cool. Well, good luck with it, with it and keep, uh, keep us posted. So excellent. Well, um, Let's let's now move on to the next one, which is data earnings. And let me go back to my other screen and present that. Unfortunately, these are different. Uh, it pops up different windows when it when I go to different sites. So let's go back here to this page where it shows all my earnings. And we've talked about partner earnings a little and kind of what they are. You can read more about that on the Pond5 site. And then data set earnings of course so this one was the substantial one i made 62 and a half 62 66 and uh let's now look at what they say about this and they um they have a page already dedicated to what data set earnings are and this is where of course we're going to get into is this data set Are you seeing data set? Are you seeing partner? You're still seeing partner. Um, this is where we get into AI. This is where AI is, is rearing its either ugly or cool head, depending on what you think, uh, what, what you like. Uh, if you, we'll have a talk about AI in just a moment here, but, and, and my thoughts about AI. I've got a whole video coming on my Hello Composers channel about why composers should not fear AI. And I think everybody has talked about this a lot. But let's just look at this page and talk about data sets. So here they go that you may see the notation data set earnings on one of the line items. And this is very simple. And you may have seen this on other sites, but these earnings apply to licensing activity for data sets. A new 
product offering that is aimed to support emerging technology companies looking for metadata associated with creative creative assets. Now, this is something that we're not looking at as much. Everyone is thinking, oh, they're stealing my music. They're stealing my music. And I don't even know if that's true. This is said aimed to support emerging technology company looking for metadata. Metadata is not music. Metadata is your descriptions. Metadata is your tags. Metadata is anything else that goes on in that that you input into Pond5 when you put your songs up. So metadata is not really music necessarily. So if they're if they are um, looking for metadata, then that is something. Okay, so let's read below about what are data sets. Data sets are a product product offering developed to support companies building computer vision and large language models, sets of content and metadata organized by a specific theme or topic, which can include images, videos, music, sound effects, and 3D models. So uh, data sets are comprised of various metadata, including keywords, titles, and descriptions. So I think this is a, a, a big one where they are trying to find out if someone is looking for a song with certain keywords, then uh, the AI technologies can better find it by studying songs that have these specific keywords. And so um, it goes on to talk about what are what is computer vision, <clears throat> what are data sets used for. Um, I will go ahead and put all of these links in the description below after I'm done with this video. So you can go to pond5.com, but it, it's not hard to go. Uh, you just go to pond5.com and go to the payout of all the stuff about being an artist here. You can um, you could go to and find out about all the payout methods, um, partner earnings and data sets earnings, but I'll, I'll put a link down. I think my link to go to pond five will get you to this site and then you can go in here. You may have to be in the contributor portal. I'll find out. But uh, anyway, all that information is there on the site. Okay, so let's now, uh, let me look at the comments because I have ignored y'all. Um, let's look at the comments here real quick and see what is up. Because I want to talk about AI next and see what you guys are saying about this. Okay, so um, Walt Williams says, it's a good time to get into music production and music in general. Yes, no doubt. Hey, Walt, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Uh, Lucas says, well, I haven't figured out what whether partners and database will be monthly at income like a passive one. Like, will these partners and data, data sets earnings be monthly? I would bet you they will. So if we go back to that, I'm not going to call that up. But if I go back and we look at the 12th, it would make sense. Again, I'm speculating. Luca, that uh, on the 12th, they would announce those earnings so they would be on our April 15th. Um, unlike Audio Jungle and other places, they they pay you right up until the 15th, it seems, for any sales. So if you have sales on the 15th when they pay, it is coming out. So uh, it would make sense to me, and I would just assume, although, and today is the 12th. So we need to watch uh, and see what happens uh, in the next few days this weekend to see if this is paid again. It would be very, very interesting to see if this is paid again. Let us let me share my screen one more time to show my data earnings there. And let's look at this one more time. Um, again, if we look there, April 12th, and today is May 12th. So could we be on the verge of more earnings? That's the question. And uh, we'll all just have to kind of wait and see, won't we? And uh, revisit this. I'll put in the comments if we see those again. But uh, yeah, could be the 12th of every month. Uh, could be the 12th of never, <laughs> if anybody knows that song. Um, anyway, all right. So uh, let's see what else we got. Um, 30 tracks uploaded so far. Good. Uh, with Pond5. You want volume, 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 volume. I need some reverb for that. But uh, yeah, as many tracks as you could get up. Remember, people are looking for this. I've got, I think I'm closing in on 300, but that's including uh, cut downs and things like that. Uh, Pond5 is different. Remember that they take not just the main track, but any uh, cut downs you have, 60s, 30s, loops, um, instrumental tracks, things like that. So make sure 
if you're doing Pond5, you're uploading uh, as many as you can. Um, hey, Signature Music is in the house. Uh, and there is Mix Club. Hey, what's up? There, Rhett. Glad to have you here today. All right, so let's move forward here a little bit, and let's just talk about the AI in the room. Um, you know, I, I have uh, had a lot of time over the past few weeks to talk about and think about AI. Um, Stevie and I have talked about it a lot on the podcast. We even were invited onto Jesse's show to talk about this very site, Pond5, and this very topic, AI. And uh, I'll put a link to that right here when I put the video up, and I'll also try to remember to put a video down there. If not, just go to Jesse's site and look for the video with me and Steve where we talk about uh, AI and Pond5. And uh, I think I pretty much said all I need to say there. I, I still don't think that I am worried at all about, about AI, and not just with Pond5 or licensing, but it's just in general, because I consider myself a composer. I have a whole channel called Hello Composers. And by the way, let me just say, I don't have a, a, a thing for this, but please go down and uh, and, and subscribe to Hello Composers, uh, what uh, YouTube site. I'm trying to grow that and, and really love to talk about composing. As you know, here on this channel, I am busy talking about making income and earnings and all this kind of stuff and stock music and sync licensing and music production and Spotify and, and all the ways that you can make income with your music. And that's pretty much the directive of this channel. So there's not a lot of time to talk about composition, but on that channel, we do talk about it. So go over and uh, just do me a favor, subscribe here too. If you're just finding this channel and I'm just watching me just talk away, make sure you subscribe here. But would really love all of you folks who subscribe to Make Music Income to also jump over and join us if you're a composer and you wanna explore more of your composer side, that's what we do there. All right, uh, but let's get back to AI. And on that channel, I'm gonna do something about why as a composer, I'm not afraid of AI. And, that, and the main reason why I'm not afraid of it is because it can never make what I make. It can make facsimiles of what I make. Um, I don't doubt the technology will improve and that's the way it should, it always does. But also, you know, we have a long history folks of being scared of new inventions that come along. The printing press, it, it put a lot of people, it changed the way information was spread. Suddenly books didn't have to be handwritten by monks. Uh, they, they could be printed in bulk and sent around the world. We have, uh, do you know the pipe organ was something that completely, every musician that existed in the church, um, orchestral members, uh, woodwind players, they were all freaking out because they thought the pipe organ was going to replace them. What, what do we have to do in the church anymore? Well, that was 600 years ago. I don't think orchestra members have been displaced by that. And, um, but and there have been plenty of inventions the phonograph um radio everything that's come along has people have been afraid that it was going to put them out of business in the way they used to do stuff and maybe some people it has but only because those people haven't adapted there were plenty of people on radio and had successful radio careers who just translated that to television when it came up so that they could become and stay popular and stay doing what they did and so the new technology of television, which was a game changer because it was visual instead of just aural, it became a big deal for all entertainers, anyone who wanted to continue to have a, uh, a life and, and work in entertainment. And so they just made the transition and people are smart that do that. The people who seamlessly just went from vinyl to cassette tapes, to CDs, to downloads, to streaming, and they just moved on to the new model. And they they weren't afraid. Oh, it's all over the sky is falling. And I think in a way we're like that with AI. We're, we're just kind of freaking out a little bit about being replaced. And I think if you back up, especially if you're a composer, but even if you're just a music producer, if we back up and go, okay, let's not let's let's focus on what I am and what I do. And that has to be unique enough. And, and and good enough in order to 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 be what I need to be and to survive anything that comes at me because AI if you if you think AI is going to put you out of a job or out of money or 
make you irrelevant, then you probably think a lot of things are going to do that. You probably have a lot of challenges everywhere. So stay strong, my friends, with AI, with this whole AI thing, and let's not worry about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Lucas says, I'm I'm waiting for the good news. Today is the 12th, right? Um, Enemy says, it's good to know income is increasing for you. I feel pretty daunted looking through Envato forums and people saying stock wasn't worth it anymore. I'm trying to be optimistic about AI too. Uh, Arco says, new technologies always scare human race, even COVID, yeah, no doubt. Um, Rhett says, Eric, do you consider me a composer? I do classic bluegrass, jazz, and rock. I'm not like you, a true composer. Yes, I do. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what genre you, you compose. If you're composing, you do. Although bluegrass is a little shaky there, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I want to hear classic bluegrass jazz. Is that what I want to hear classic bluegrass jazz? That sounds really good. Um, I'm just kidding. Of course you are a composer and, uh, back to enemies, um, uh, comment here, feeling that, people saying that stock isn't worth it anymore. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. If you were just hold on, I've got that in my comments here. I, I don't, I don't think I agree with that and I'll tell you why. All right. Uh, speaking of moving on. So let's, let's final, uh, finally lo look at this screen. Uh, one last time here, my earnings earnings for the month were 85, 25, including, um, uh, all of the stuff on the marketplace, including all the sales including the data partner and data set earnings. And um, as you see, I had a payout of 97.92, which is a nice payout from, from uh, Pond5, at least for me, to get almost $100. Um, and I'm going to show you last month's, um, last month's earnings totally in, in, in all of this, in all of stock. And uh, it outdid everything, including Motion Array, which is no small, which is not a hard feat these days with my Motion Array earnings. But um, so that is what I did there. Again, really helped by the sixty-two dollars that came out of nowhere, and I, I'm sure everyone felt that way with Pawn Five. But I felt like that uh, it was a good month there. And now I want to share one other screen with you. I want to share my. Um, earnings for the month. And doo, 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 let's see, here it is. And so this is my royalty-free income sheet. I, I keep everything on spreadsheets, folks. I have spreadsheets out the wazoo. And here down here is this year. You can see it's a little, uh, I have been a little lax the past two months in really working on my uh, spreadsheets here. I, I've, I've stopped a lot in uh, keeping every single penny from every single library. And, and also I've stopped doing it through the month. It's, it's really addicting to uh, have music in all of these libraries and then want to watch them daily to see if you made a penny or a dollar or $5 or you had, a, you had downloads or whatever. It is so addicting. It's, it's like gambling. <laughs> it's, it's a little like gambling, except you're not gambling. I mean, you're just putting the music out there and hoping you make something, right? But um, anyway, you can see the outlines of April yet, because some of these you don't know. Of course, all the goofballs down here, I'll likely not make anything from. Um, but these top ones, motion elements, I make a few bucks at least every month. Same with audio sparks, I make a few bucks every month. Um, but Pond5, you can see before this, there was only about $16, $17 of all three, January, February, and March. It took um, the sales I was having uh, last month and then, of course, that the data set earnings and stuff to bump me up to $85.25, where, uh, as you can see, uh, that was bigger than the 68 with, um, you know, with, with, Upon motion array. Sorry, I was trying to switch, switch screens there. Um, and you can see in general um, what's been going on these past few months. Now, this did turn out to be a better month. And with everything coming in, including content ID reports kind of late, so I won't know what it's what it's doing yet. Motion elements will probably add something. And then maybe a few pennies from all the also rands here. But um, it should be over a $200 month. So this is something I want to talk about. Um, let's talk about that for a second. 
Um, this and this goes to an anime's uh, comment here. Anime, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but um, yes, two hundred dollars is nothing to get excited about for my income as a whole. It's a very very small percentage, you know. Well, you say two, two to five percent of my income. So why are you making a video talking about? 200 making $200. Well, because $200 has been $600 before, and that's a car payment and, and a, an electric payment. $200, by the way, pays electric or pays uh, a couple of household bills. And these are mostly songs that were created years ago. Uh, all the songs that you saw in there, I didn't create this year. I created last year or the year before that, or sometimes 10 years ago. All those songs are in Pond5 and bringing in a buck or two bucks or five bucks. And now these data set earnings and uh, different, and that's just on Pond5. They make money and streams on Motion Array. They make streams on Audio Jungle and all of those turn in to what you're seeing on, on that spreadsheet. And um, again, if I can have 200 to $300 coming in, which is about what I averaged last year, I think it was about 250 last year, I'm going to I'm going to be okay with that especially stuff that is recurrent especially stuff that I don't have to create this month to make money like I do with normal work. Um let's see. Uh let's see. Look, Lucas says I've had some sales even on 123RF and deposit photos now that trying to do something even on most Music Evolution and Song Trader. Yeah, Song Trader is a whole different deal. I have a lot of stuff on Song Trader. And Song Trader, you make money in, in different ways than stock music. It's not a stock music site. A lot different. I have a whole video on that that you can find in my videos. But um, go look at the Song Trader one. I, that one pretty much still stands up. I still make money the same way I did in that video. I'd, I'd say I'd put it up in the corner, but I won't remember. So just go to my to my site and look for Song Trader or to my um to my YouTube's and look look through look for Song Trader, and it, it has all the ways that I make money there. I think it's probably the the best one. If we if I look back at my year so far, it's the fourth leading income this year. No, now Pond Five is it's the fifth leading income, and last year Song Trader was third. Um, so uh, again, and I don't pay anything. I don't even I'm not even on the paid Song Trader anymore. Uh, let's see here. Um, Enemy says, I tried making an account on Music Revolution, but I got a confirmation email. Never got a confirmation. I don't even know what Music Revolution is. Um, Enemy says, I'm saying her name right. Yay. Um, so uh, Lucas says, they are accepting composers and collaborate with Adobe. Hmm. Okay. I'll we'll have to look into that. Shane uh, just speaks to the reality that as a musician, you have to you have to have more than one stream. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Wow, if I'd only done a podcast called Don't Put Your Eggs in One Basket. Oh, wait, we did for our Easter uh, podcast. I, I, It's my main thing I preach. Shane knows this. Anybody who's been in my masterminds knows that I have so many balls up in the air. I'm afraid I'm going to get a concussion if they all come flying down at me. But it's because you you have to do that in this. I'll go in a few hours and go teach at a school, which is a, a form of income, just like I'm doing this video now, which will, which is live right now, but it'll also play in and make mu music income from my YouTube site. And, uh, and then I, I have to get off here and I have to do some other things. I have to talk about my podcast today. I have to, uh, I have to go and do some tracks. I have to do some client work today, which that brings a substantial part of my monthly income way more than stock music, but I just like talking about all this stuff, but you have to have lots of income streams. Um, so anyway, all right, let's get back now to uh, to my good Pond 5 month. And somebody asked me earlier if I would, you know, some, uh, someone said, I think it was Sotos who said uh, that he is doing $30 a month. I have decided to start raising my prices a little bit. I think I've gone back and forth between nine and $5 on Pond 5. But I do put up my uh, songs that are, um, I think if we go to my dashboard, not my dashboard, but my uploads. Let me just show you my uploads here real quick on Pond5 so you can see those. And um, Pond5, present. Because I, I uh, like I said, I keep track of a lot of things and I watch a lot of things 
and I change my prices a lot. So, oh, as a matter of fact, I have everything at $15. We're no wonder I'm not making any sales. No, that's not true. I just have uh, $15, you can see right here, on the patriotic things. Um, one of the cool things about, um, you can just search for your patriotic songs or a certain word, and then you can select them all here. And you then you can go down to the bottom over here in actions, and you can click all the way down to set price. And I could change the price from all of those. Let's say I just want to set them at 25. I want to make some money. So I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to go through this little thing here. And now when I refresh this screen, it's going to instead now say 25 for all of these songs, which to me is, is going to be fine. And so that will, um, I'll see how that does. If it does terrible, I'll pull them down. Uh, like I said, I'm not necessarily um, changing prices all the live long day, back and forth all the time. It's easy to do, as you just saw here in Pond 5. Not so easy to do on Audio Jungle. You have to go in individually to each song and change them. Unless you can put them all for sale. I've not really done that, but you could do that as well. So uh, let's see if anybody has any thoughts about this here. Um, cool. Um, all right. So that is what I've been doing with changing prices and raising prices. And I, I think, uh, let me just check my whole um, catalog here. I'll take off the search term and just search in general and general. And yeah, I've got everything at nine, it looks like, except the patriotic stuff and new things. But I'd like to put all my new things. Let me just show you how I do this again. So I'm just going to select these new songs that I have I've just put up. And sometimes with new songs, I'll change those to $25. I don't think it does anything. But again, I can select the ones I want. I can go down to the bottom of this page, which, sorry, is very long because I don't know what I have this on. But... Um, if I go down to the very, very bottom and I go down to actions over here on the left and I go down to set price, then I can set it for, I'm going to set those for 25 as well and execute. And now it's going to say, okay. And now it's going to do all that work for me and boom, it did it. And now if I go back up here and refresh, then you're going to see the new songs now be at $25 um, and not at nine dollars anymore so relatively easy to go in another reason why i love pawn five really do, if, relatively easy to go in and change the price on all of those real quickly so yeah i am raising prices i um i just feel like it's time um to come up a little bit we'll see if that works if it doesn't work i'll either go higher or lower you know that's the beauty of of this site also the beauty with pawn five is if you decide you don't want your music training ai then you can absolutely decide to take your music out. Um, Audio Jungle, you may or may not have heard this, but just yesterday we all got a, a, a anybody who's associated with Audio Jungle or Envato Elements got an email from Envato saying they were changing their terms. Unlike Pond5, they, they said they were going to give us until June 1st to pull our stuff out if we didn't want it training AI models. Again, this isn't a video about Envato, mainly because it's harder for everybody to sign up. No, they aren't. They haven't been taking new authors on Audio Jungle for two years, and getting invited to Envato Elements seems pretty difficult. So, uh, yeah, I am raising my prices, and um, it it just seems to work a little bit better at five on on Pond Five for me. I think most people have found that out if you watch a lot of my experiments from last year. There were huge. Um, huge changes when I changed everything to $5 versus keeping it at $25 or, or less. Um, let's see here. Rhett says, uh, stock music is always in transition state. It's still better than it was in 2012 when we did not have all the options to sell our music. Exactly, right. eBay was a good place to sell, sometimes 500 plus a week. Do you mean downloads? Um, Shane says... I'm going to drop everything to five dollars. See if that spurs sales. Yeah, let me know. Um, wow, that price hack change hack was extremely helpful. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, it 
it really works nicely. And you can do a lot of things with that submit thing. You can also apply things to templates. You can do a lot of different things, but the price thing, and that price changing hack is is priceless. And I use it all the time. It's so, so nice. And I wish Audio Jungle had a way to do it like that. Walt says, great tactics in Pond5. Patriotics are definitely going well. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, yeah. Uh, say, what? wait, did people really sell their music on stock music on, on eBay? And you said, for sure. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know eBay. That seems crazy. Um, so anyway, um, okay. Let's see what else I got here. So overall, and if we go back to my, um, let me share one more screen with you and then we're about done here and just in time too. I like to keep these things under an hour. Um, and if we just go back to my Excel sheet for one last time and take a look at the entire month of stock music income, um, you'll see that it was, okay, come on, what did I do? Um, you'll see it was relatively good month. Like I said, it was $200, which is, uh, and it's going to be over that. It's probably going to creep towards 250 by the time all of these little things come in. Song Trader might provide a little bit more. Um, I should get something for motion elements and content ID could be good, could be not so good, but we'll see what that adds. Doesn't look like I'm going to get a content ID check for this particular quarter. Um, but anyway, all that said, if you look at this still, uh, I'm 29% negative from last year when I made 278 during this time. That had also started to come down from the heydays of this year where I was making five, 400, 600, 500, you know, uh, having pretty decent months and on my way to a almost $4,500 year in stock music. Last year was way down, more towards a $3,000 a year. And then this year so far is only at about five or 600 after four months. So extrapolate that out and we're looking at about another $2,000 drop, I mean, another $1,000 drop. But again, um, I, I I will be honest with you and and just tell you that I am not um, I'm not pushing my stock as much as you, I'm not playing it. Or, and and this is something that Steve and I talked about yesterday on the podcast, and uh, that'll be out on Monday. But that is sometimes I am not serving the client like I should at at these stock music libraries. If you want to do well, you have to play the game. You have to serve who the client is. And the client in stock music is not the library. Um, it is the people who are going to download the music and use it. And sometimes I think we get it twisted a little bit that we're trying to get Pond5 interested in our music. It's not Pond5. And Pond5 is, doesn't care about your music. They care about their clients. There are people who are going to download these things and they that's what they are wanting from the composers like us that are looking to make money and make music income by putting our music up on these libraries. Um, yeah, it, $200 is not crazy, but guess what? It pays a major bill. It pays my phone bill. Actually, my phone bill is less than that now. Thank goodness. But it pays almost to play, it pays electric. It pays more than uh, you know, then it, and that's good. If you can pay a car payment with this to me, that is good. Um, when we look at the state of stock in general, I think that it is, um, it, it is something that is still worth doing. People ask me this all the time. I did a video about this a few months ago. Is stock still worth doing? Guess what? I think it is. I think if nothing else, it's good practice for any kind of client service that you're going to do. I'd love your thoughts in here. Uh, if you think that, um, if, if you think stock music is worth it, Shane says, are the patriotic stuff you do in, in all in public domain? I believe so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Taryn, Hey, thanks for joining us. Please subscribe Taryn. Uh, uh, Hey there. Um, thanks for watching from London. Hope you're having some luck over there. Um, Mix Club says, I sold a 127 CD set on DVD on eBay. Well, yes, uh, that's a little off topic, but, uh, DVD CDs, I never really sold them on eBay, but I did. I think the last big CD set I had was when I sold my album. I made an album a couple years ago and tried a big set. I made some money off that, but only for friends and family. 
Uh, Dr. Hoffman Alive, or Dr. Hoffman Live, I got $50 of data set earnings last month. Have they paid this month? I don't think so. Obviously, I, I was just looking at that. I can look at financials right this second. It is 12.56 on Friday, the May 12th and um, Eastern Time. And as of now, there are no uh, data set earnings for May uh, in my financials. And I don't want to show you that those numbers because it is scary small. Um, yeah, we're, Lucas says, we're all waiting for that. Um, it was stock music. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Arco says, I think stock music is a good start for anyone who is starting out with licensing. Licensing or anything. You know, it doesn't matter if you're starting out licensing, starting out as a music artist, starting out as a composer, starting out as a, um, a teacher or anything that you're doing and you have music, put it out there. Well, I think one of the things that people just do more than I'd like is they just hide, they hide their music under a rock or on their computer, which sometimes if you have a computer like mine, it's kind of a rock, but uh, it works about the same. Um Thanks, Dr. Hoffman Live for joining us today. So just about done here. Um, I'd be interested if you're still watching this video at this point, and some of you are live here, in your Pond5 experience, what have you had happen? And uh, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what's going on for you there. If you're frustrated, if you're halfway happy, if you are uh, wanting to get into it, remember my free course on how to upload to Pond5. But I still recommend Pond5. I still recommend it to everybody. I'm doing a whole video about it right now. I spent an hour talking about it. And it's because I think it is interesting for us all to uh, see how our music can do on these stock sites. And I think Pond5 is like the, Pond5 is like the beginning. It's like when you're gonna ride a bike with training wheels, Pond5 is the training wheels library for, uh, for any kind of licensing, to be honest with you. And so I think Pond5 is a great way to start. I still believe it. Like I said, I have a video called Start on Pond5. You can find it in the description below. You should go watch it and, and see why I, I've i talked about it here, but it's much more concise and will let you um, figure out how and if you wanna get started with Pond5. Also make sure you see the link to get started with Pond5, there's a direct link to it, and then my Pond5 upload course, which is free, always free, the Pond5 upload course, and then my stock music stuff. You wanna, uh, you wanna get the stock music, stock market ebook. It just has links to every place so that you can start messing around and finding all these libraries that you could be in with your music. And they're all free. There's no, none of these require you. I mean, the stock market's not free. It's, yeah, I, I, although it's really, it's really tough. It's five, it's $9, but, um, I still recommend pond five. I think it is the place to start. And I think it, uh, has just great, um, financial pages that show you what you're making that, and they're always looking apparently for new ways to make us money as composers and as producers and as music artists. So I really recommend it that you put your stuff there and, um, yeah, let me know what you think about all this in the comments would love to know. Um, uh, Rhett says, Pond5 makes it so easy. They really do. Yeah. Taryn, thanks for being here. Uh, glad to see you. Um, yes, absolutely, Taryn. Let's start with Pond5. Um, it's a great place to start and it'll, it'll kind of get you going in this whole licensing thing. And then you can start to stretch out once you have started putting music up there. And the, also, I want to mention the beauty about Pond5 is that you don't um, have to worry about your music. Um, uh, you know, if you need to take it down, you can take it down. The Pond5 is not perpetual. Pond5 uh, is pretty quick to take stuff down too. So if you decide you want to sign it to another library, you decide you want to put it on Spotify because you don't want necessarily it to be, um, you know, uh, messing up anything for some reason, you can take it down off Pond5 very quickly and easily. Uh, let's see. Enemy says, I'm also seeing Pond5 as a starting off point. I found working on music regularly to put up there has also pushed me to improve my production skills more. That is fantastic. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with this. That is something that this does and really uh, helps you kind of grow. D 
D-Man says, could you submit songs with vocals or do they have to be instrumentals? Any kind, dude. Vocals, instrumentals, uh, tap dancing, anything you want to... <laughs> You want to put up there uh, tuba, tuba solos. They take everything. Now, just remember, uh, vocals are actually um, getting more popular on licensing in general. So it's not going to hurt you to put your uh, vocal stuff up there for sure. So absolutely. Either one. And if you have a vocal song you're putting up, make sure you also put up the instrumental at the same time. That's the beauty with Pond5, that almost every other library doesn't do they let some libraries let you like add the um they let you add each of the um songs uh, or uh, the, the vocal the instrumental all the different takes you have the mixes they let you upload them in a in a big one big zip file but pond five is different in that each song that you put up is a separate song they want it to be something that people can search for and find and find the thing they're looking for and it doesn't necessarily all have to go together. So any other ways you could make these songs, vocal versions, instrumental versions, cut down versions, uh, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, Rhett says, watch out for uh, making uh, songs with vocals that are loop, like that you're getting off of Output Arcade or you're getting off of Splice. Uh, anything that belongs to someone else, watch out for that because you, you could get in trouble for that. And, uh, and, and we hear that these days, I, I've started to hear a lot of people using these vocal loops and I think, well, that sounds good, but how many other people can use that loop? And then will you get into trouble with content ID and with all the ways that AI is listening to our songs and hearing things, there's trouble to be had if you're using loop, uh, vocals that are in loops and things like that. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Caution about melodic loops in general on any loops really. Uh, D-Man says, should the instrumental version contain the vocal melody played on an instrument or more like a karaoke with no vocal? I don't worry about that. Uh, I don't think it matters. Maybe both or or just one. But I, I usually just will take out the vocal and then put the backing track on. And uh, that's fine. Again, that might be what they want. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had a song. It was on Motion Array. And it was used by a documentary and they ended up only using the instrumental, which was just me taking the vocal off because they didn't want a melody line playing over the voiceover that was talking over the music. So remember, D-Man, that these are things that are being used by people on videos and they are they usually have vocals that they're talking. Like, for instance, I could be talking and there could be light music playing behind me. Well, I wouldn't want to have vocals in that music or an a lead line going i would want to have just background because that works better because it's in the background so um all right well that's about all i have today folks any last questions make sure that you put them in the comment it was an interesting month on pond five and i hope this has helped uh i will hopefully try to get some timestamps in here if not you can go and look at all the um all the little banners that i've done here and find your way around this video. Thanks so much for watching and for hanging out. Always fun to talk with you guys and talk about all the cool stuff that's going on. D-Man, thank you for, for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, Arco, Rhett, Anime. Good to have you in here, Anime. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, let's see, who else is here? Teron, thank you for being here from the UK. Make sure you subscribe, my friend. Dr. Hoffman, if you are still here, please uh, subscribe. Love having all of you folks here today. Shane, good to see you. Uh, Luca, thanks so much. Arco, as usual. Everybody, Walt, um, I think I've said hello to everybody. Thank you so much for watching and being here. Good to see you guys. Have a good day. Yeah, Rhett, have a good, thanks for hanging with us. Have a good time. Everybody go watch Rhett's channel, The Mix Club. Does some uh, cool mixing videos over there. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. That's going to do it for me. I'm off to do music things and make money. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye now.